read if you want. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Is, is it page 179? It does not follow. That's right. It does not follow. Is correct. Page number is different in different editions. It does not follow that the work is not to be done perfectly. with success, with a right adaptation of means to ends. On the contrary, a perfect working is easier to action done tranquilly in yoga than to action done in the blindness of hopes and fears. Just a, by minute, the judgment. just a minute, I can't find the text. Can yeah. you repeat? Can you repeat oh. the page? Page will be either um, 171. I think your page will be 170. Let's check. That's right. 170, okay. last okay. three lines. Just check. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Prachar. Got it? Hmm. Marika, you have got it? Yes, yes. Yes, now I got it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, ma'am. Start reading again. Okay. It does not follow that the work is not to be done perfectly with success, with a right adaptation of means to ends. On the contrary, a perfect working is easier to action done tranquilly in yoga than to action done in the blindness of hopes and fears, named by the judgments of the stumbling of reason running about amidst the eager trepidations of the hasty human will. Yoga says, the Gita elsewhere is the true skill in works. Yoga, karmasu, kausulam. But all this is done impersonally by the action of a great universal light and power operating through the individual nature. The karma yogin knows that the power given to him will be adapted to the fruit decree. The divine thought behind the work equated with the work he has to do. The will in him, which will not be wish or desire, but an impersonal drive of conscious power directed towards an aim not his own. Subtly, regulated in its energy and direction by the divine wisdom. The result may be success as the ordinary mind understands it, or it may seem to be that mind to be, to be defeat and failure. But to him, it is always a success in Nenter, not by him, but by the all-wise manipulator of action and result because he does not seek for victory, but only for the fulfillment of the divine will and wisdom, which works out its ends through apparent failure as well as and often with greater force than through apparent triumph. Arjuna, hidden to fight, is assured of victory, but even if certain defeat were before him, he must still fight because that is the present work assigned to him as his immediate share in the great sum of energies by which the divine will is surely accomplished. Very interesting, Para. There are quite a few things we have to discuss here. Most of you may be already be familiar with it, but anyway, it's very interesting. So, how is the divine work to be done? We have been told repeatedly that it has to be done without nishkama karma, without any desire for success in the world. Now, if you don't want success in the world, then disinterestedness, then are you likely to not take too much interest in the work and just do it mechanically? That's a question being discussed. Okay? So, disinterestedness does not mean you don't take interest. You take interest, but you don't think of the result. You don't think of the success. Okay? You just do the work that has to be done as well as you can. Okay? 
that's very difficult because normally when we do a work we want 100% we want a success so we go even some sometimes in details to see that the work is done well so when you have a desire the likelihood of you are doing the work with great care is there but when you don't want the uh, when you are not interested in the desire or rather not not thinking of the uh, effect the sorry the result of the work then there is likely to be a laxity in the effort so that is being discussed okay so it does not follow you have to do the work calmly quietly without expecting a result nishkama karma okay the fruits of your action don't belong to you says the gita it belongs to the divine so <coughs> it does not follow that the work is not to be done perfectly with success okay with the right adaptation of means to ends on the contrary a perfect working is easier to action than tranquilly in yoga than to action done in the blindness of hopes and fears lame by the judgments of the stumbling reason running about amid the eager trepidations of the hasty human will yoga says the gita elsewhere <coughs> is a true skill in works yoga karma su kaushalam yoga is in works it is skillful skillfulness now this is very interesting because somebody asked mother mother what does it mean disinterested work okay does it mean that we don't take interest in the work so mother answered you have to take interest in the work disinterestedly <laughs> so in other words you have to take interest in the work but the idea is that you must not expect the result do it as best as you can and if you normally fail you are disappointed and when you succeed you are happy but the disappointment and the happiness should not be there because the divine the result goes to the divine and not to you that's the whole idea okay so the perfect working is easier to action done tranquilly in yoga than to action done in blindness is very obvious even to those who are doing even ordinary work when you are concentrating fully with a calm mind a mind which is not bothered by success or failure or you are worried about other things then actually your work will be well done okay you you, you hope that the work will succeed or you fear that you are um, you will fail this is what happens with students okay when they have to give an examination that's why there is so much of tension for students they are always fearful that they may not be able to do it well okay So you do it calmly, quietly, without any <coughs> thinking too much of the results. Lamed by the judgment of the stumbling reason. Even the reason will tell you, "Oh, don't do this. Oh, don't do that. Do it this way. Do it that way." All this is lame. So I'm very saying it. It is only half. It's not the full. Um, the, your effort will be lame. Okay, it will be imperfect. Running about amid the Eager trepidations of the hasty human will. Eager trepidation. You know, you interest say, "Oh, this work I'll do, I'll do." So that's what I'm showing on the day. Yoga says the Gita elsewhere is a true skill in works. Yoga karma su kaushal. This is from chapter two, verse fifty. But all this is done impersonally. by the action of a great universal light and power operating through the individual nature now because he has already told you that all the work that your body mind life is doing you are not doing at all it is nature which is doing using your instrumentation of body vital and mind so the result also should go to nature and not to you and nature means again the divine who works through nature So this is exactly what you have to understand. But all this is being done. This is done impersonally by the action of a great universal light and power operating through the individual nature. The great universal light and power is nature, universal nature, who is manipulating your body, your vital and your mind. Okay, so you are doing nothing at all. You don't know that when you have a ego, you think that you are doing. 
the karma yoga the one who does the work without any without asking for the fruit of the works nishkama karma and the karma yogi knows that the power given to him will be adapted to the fruit degree he knows that the work that he is doing will be either perfect or imperfect according to the capacity that he has the capacity that is given to him in his birth with the body mind life it can't be more than that or less than that <laughs> knows that the power given to him will be adapted to the fruit degree the divine thought behind the work equated with the work he has to do the will in him which will not be wish or desire wish or desire is expecting a result but without expecting a result you will your will will do the work as best as you can knowing fully well that you are not doing it you are only an instrument and nature is doing the work through you okay but the impersonal drive of a conscious power directed towards an aim not his own so universal nature is using you as an instrument and doing what she needs to be done through you and if the aim is hers not yours okay. so although you may think that i am doing and i want the aim i want the result and it is my aim to do this actually it is the nature's aim doing it through you okay so that's a interesting part the aim is not yours the aim is nature's in a very wider sense subtly regulated in its energy and direction by the divine wisdom the divine wisdom is working through nature in a very subtle way and you think that you are doing it in a very gross way okay. the grosses of consciousness things that i am doing actually is not you doing at all so <laughs> okay the result man now we comes to the result now this is very interesting also okay the result whether you are going to succeed or not because you are not trying for success not failure you are just doing it as perfectly as you can okay the result may be success as your ordinary mind understands it okay as your ordinary mind understands it okay i think they put a comma there which should not be there i think it's a mistake as your ordinary mind why should a comma be there after ordinary all of you may not have um uh, i would like to check this because it's an error um arshana ji you have cwsa okay who has cwsa any one of you i i have rangata rangata okay okay if you have cwsa tell me is there a comma after ordinary um let me let me let me check uh, rangada in my book also it is not there i have the avak addition ah so they have corrected that mistake obviously yeah. as a ordinary mind is one why should there be a comma there no there is uh, i have the avak addition which actually follows the sabcl ha huh. so you have the sabcl na rangada yeah i have old sabcl so uh, and i have a comma after ordinary <laughs> uh, that must be a misprint or something because it is not there in the vac edition exactly. which is so usually have, similar to the sabcl yeah it is so they, have, they have corrected it that's right that's uh, right yes my so mine also i am having comma after ordinary uh, yeah okay so not in mine <laughs> <laughs> okay that is that is you have to see the video so what you saying is that the agent is doing the work in a very subtle way from behind and you think that you are doing it it's okay <laughs> sometimes you know when you are driving and uh, you are the driver and there are people who sit at the back on the back seat and go on telling you don't do this don't do that it's called back seat driving <laughs> and the driver gets very annoyed it's quite a feature sometimes it happens so nature is sitting at the back seat and actually telling you what to do and what not to do and you think that you are driving but in this case okay really nature is driving through you <laughs> is interesting we are looking at it the result may be success as the ordinary mind understands it why because 
the success may be a failure and that failure is a success for that particular time and for that particular work that's interesting and that's exactly what we are going to discuss can a failure be intended and can it be considered success okay just take a very simple thing take the effort to go into space okay i like to use this because you start sending a rocket up and it fails and falls down that's what happened to india when they sent up a rocket first room from trivandrum okay it went up to 60 miles and fell down because you have not followed all the rules and you don't know the techniques of how to do it so the failure is really a success because now you know what you should not do this is exactly the same thing as the error every error leads you to more towards a right way to do it so all failures are not failures at all they are success at that level so every error and that's why sir you say error is the handmaiden of truth error is the one that guides you to the right path so you must not think of it as an error okay the biggest error for instance for us would be the transformation of the body which mother did not complete so was there a failure on her part absolutely not because at that level the world conditions were not ready and what she has done was possible under the world conditions and that's why it's very interesting there were many sadhaks who were very upset when mother passed away they said my god she has not transformed the body she said she will transform her body but actually what happened was nolita who is such a, a real spiritual realist okay she said the work of transformation has been postponed now this is exactly what is being discussed here okay so every postponement is one step towards the right thing so what mother has done the transformation of the body has been done right up to the subtle body okay <coughs> this is discussed in many books uh, as well but that's what she did but the last step could not be taken because of the world conditions they were not ready yet okay every work depends on the amount of knowledge that you have at that particular time and the conditions the best example i have can always think of is leonardo da vinci's uh, even had the idea of uh, heavier than air flight na no? but it did not take place for 400 years it's only after 400 years that flying with a heavier than air machine was successful okay so it is one step towards that. so before that all were failures okay remember also the famous example of uh, the one who invented that bulb okay thomas alva edison 400 uh, 250 times he failed and yet he went on went on because each failure showed him what to do what to right thing to do so failure is not really failure it's a step on the way that's it. and so you should not be you should not be depressed you should not be disappointed that's the whole idea that's what is saying here is reason an idea of failure and uh, success is a very mental idea if you go beyond the mind you will see that even every failure is really a, a success at that particular time and on that occasion that's the interesting thing that we have to understand okay sir the result may be success as the ordinary mind understands it or it may seem to that mind to be defeat and failure look at the language very clear okay to the ordinary mind a defeat may seem to be defeat and failure but to him it is always the success intended not by him but by the all wise manipulator of action and result who is the all wise manipulator of action and result the master of works as shrimdo uses his word again and again the master of works he works through the nature which is his deputy in the physical world and he does the work through nature does it through the individual it's a three way thing the master of works has an intention and he deputes a mission to nature and nature executes it through the individual so this is the what is it so ends uh, which works out with its ends through apparent failure as well as often with greater force than through apparent triumph 
Now that's very interesting because if you have apparent triumph, then you don't look for other things. Second time you may fail. Okay, then you wonder, hey, I succeeded first time. Why I'm not succeeding second time? So you have not looked at it very carefully. So this what you are saying is very interesting. You are saying apparent failure is often a greater force than apparent triumph. Because when you have gone through the grind and you know all the defects, your knowledge of it is perfect. But sudden, sudden uh, triumph and sudden success, you don't know all the laws and all the rules and what you should be done and what is not to be done. So this is very interesting. What he said. Note also interestingly the Sirmo's failure in the IAS test. Okay, it is intended because just imagine what would happen if he had. Past, <laughs> he would be in the in the um, British service, <laughs> so it was intended to fail. Okay, so that's an interesting uh, thing. There is also very interesting uh, uh, in uh, thoughts and aphorisms where he says that uh, failure he understood to be a blessing. Okay, that's exactly what happened in Sir's case also. His failure in the IAS was a blessing. <laughs> Angada, yes. Uh, seeing success in failure is quite uh, more easier than seeing failure in success. I I don't think like, I've heard exactly exactly what you said. Exa examples. Uh, I, I won't. Uh, could you give some examples where it is actually we feel it is success, but it is actually a failure? Oh, okay, okay, okay. The other way around. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, I can tell you very little with my own experience of you know my computer, my knowledge of computers is all very, very, very weak because I did not go through the grind like children go through nowadays. So if I am trying something, suddenly it comes. Okay, but I don't know how it has come. Okay, because I have not followed all the slight steps. I have unconsciously it has uh, succeeded. So a quick success sometimes. Depends on the circumstances. I don't know if I can give you a, a a very good example, but you can see that if work is being done suddenly by chance, it may lead to success. Okay, and then it happened very often with me. I think that I have understood, and next time again it doesn't come. So I wonder what happened, because you must know all the steps. Okay, and all the steps that have to be taken to get the right result. Okay, but you have not done that. <laughs> you have asked an interesting question. The the failure is intended. That is easy to understand. But how a success did not be a success is uh, you have to imagine. I think what I can say is without giving an example that the conditions were such that you succeeded. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'll try and think of an example. Uh, uh, okay. We can discuss because uh, see, failure turning into success is so so many examples. It just uh, struck me that he's saying that uh, that has a greater force and apparent triumph. So, uh, yes. and often uh, you know, success gives us so much joy that we never can think that it is actually a failure. So that was a, a interesting nuance that struck me. That's why I thought yes. That's of right. discussing. Yes. It can happen in um, uh, even in medicine. Maybe, yeah, maybe Rangada, that what you the examples, the way you put it, you know, like uh, often success, we get a success, but we really don't know all the nuances of how we got the success out of the processes. But exactly. if we fail, we have to go again to the bottom, again start, you know, like um, Sherwin writing Savitri 50 times. He yes. could have first, because he did it consciously, he could have said that first time it is success. Or tenth time it is successful, but he told no. I have to yes. go through. But normally human beings don't do that. Once we are successful, once I have passed my seventh class exam, I will never open the seventh class book to see what is there or not. Yes, exactly. But maybe <laughs> if I had failed, I'd have gone through it more thoroughly and all that. It's, That's I'm just in, That's so right. it was. This was an inter I just thought found the nuance very interesting. That's why I thought of this. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's right. That's why Shyam is using the word ordinary mind. Your ordinary mind. Huh. Yes, tell me. Here, here, uh, I think Shurabindo has uh, 
has uh, written this that uh, everything is apparent. Maybe that failure, but maybe that uh, triumph. But everything is apparently. But essentially, everything that failure and that triumph, essentially, they are the divine movement only, divine work, divine step. Is it that? Right? Yeah, you can say that. You can say that our idea of success and failure is only apparent. It's a mystical thing. Okay. You can say that. It's only we are looking only at the surface, and that you can say that in that in that sense. The actually success and every in fact for the divine there is no failure at all. Everything is intended. A very difficult work has to be done in ten stages. Just as I said, like the going into space, you have to do many many times and fail. And every time you fail, you get one little piece of knowledge extra, which will help you the next time. That's exactly the thing. <laughs> Now, uh, Rangesh, generally one minute. Yes, uh, well. generally yes, it is true that he is saying that apparent. Uh, but I think that no sense that why he is saying that success can be failure and failure can be success. To understand that also deeply uh, makes the thing more uh, rich and more vast. That's why I think I, I mean, try to understand each word, each phrase. That's all. Yes. Generally, of course, that's what he means. That everything is apparent, nay? Right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> that's right. So. Very interesting discussion. Now, what is failure and what is? <laughs> I can tell you another very interesting thing also. Somebody had uh, uh, had given an exam. Uh, he was an Ashram student, and he had given an exam for uh, for a job. Okay, but there was in his mind. Um, A doubt whether he should stay on in the ashram or whether he should go for the job. Okay, but then um, the uh, the interview was given and all that, and then a telegram came and he uh, got the uh, the post office told him that the telegram has come for you. You are next. Come and collect it. So while this person is going, okay, he is actually praying for a failure. <laughs> Actually, praying for a failure because he doesn't want to leave. There was a doubt in the mind, and he had given that in a particular frame of mind. He had given the interview, but he was actually when the telegram came, he saying, "Let the telegram say that I have failed." <laughs> so this is a very good example of how our ideas of what is failure and what is um, and what is success is so relative. That's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, now we read the last sentence of the para. Arjuna, willing to fight, is assured of victory. But even if certain defeat were before him, he must still fight because that is the present work assigned to him as his immediate share in the great sum of energies by which the divine will. Is surely accomplished. Another interesting, just now, another interesting thought came into my mind. Okay, Bhishma, okay, in the Mahabharat, Bhishma is siding with the Kauravas, but he knows fully well that he will fail. The Kauravas will be defeated, and yet he sides with them. Okay, <laughs> knowing fully well that he will be defeated, all his sympathies are with the Kauravas. Okay. So all this idea of failure and defeat, you have to continue to do what you have to do. That's all. Without any pre-presumption of failure and defeat. That's the whole idea. So when you are absolutely calm and quiet, and you be what do what is being told you to do, you do it. Okay. That's right. <laughs> In fact, another example I can give you. Very interesting example. When the Crips mission came in 1942 to India, they are saying that uh, we will give you dominion status, okay? And uh, the Congress Party rejected it. So you have to send someone to talk it over with the government of India, Nehru and Gandhi and all the others, Balabai Patel, and he sent Dorasame Ayengar. Okay, Dorasame Ayengar was a wonderful man, and his past lives also he was a king in France and all. So Dorsami Ayengar went and spoke to them, and when he came back, he told them, "Oh, they are not accepting." 
Okay, they don't want. In fact, Gandhi said the Crips mission offer of dominion status is like a crash, is like a post dated check on a crashing bank. You know that the check is worthless because the bank is crashing. You already know it. That was the condition of the. In the Second World War, when the uh, British were, even if they won, the colonialism would end. So that was not at all an offer which they would accept. But Shyamlu, when he is told that, sir, the mission has failed, so Shyamlu said, I knew that it would fail. So when he was asked, then why did you send? His answer was very simple. Nishkama karma. <laughs> so he did what he knew that is going to fail, but he still did it. He took all the trouble to send Ayanga, okay, Darisama Ayanga to discuss it. And now in today's, uh, in, the, in history today, we know that if he had accepted, it's very well known now, all, everybody knows it, that if he had accepted the transmission, there would have been no partition at all. So it is a pointer to what is success and what is failure. Even a failure, if they had accepted that at that time, okay, it would have led to totally different situation. So why was it necessary? That's another issue altogether. But then we, India had to go through the difficulty of this, um, the Muslim Hindu divide. So now it's a different situation altogether. Now all the Pakistanis and all that, they want to come back to India, okay? Many of them. And we had to see how it devolves, how it develops. But partition is bound to go, no? that is sure. So it's a very interesting example also of how failure is intended and yet you do the work. <laughs> That's exactly what Sadhguru is saying here. Arjuna, bidden to fight, is assured of victory. But even if certain defeat were before him, he must still fight because that is the present work assigned to him as his immediate share in the great sum of energies by which the divine will is surely accomplished. Okay, so we have got seven minutes. I don't know if we can, maybe we can just read the next one. Okay. So, Anyone, if you can read? Yes, we read the first one. Okay, okay, go ahead. Read quickly because we have got very little time. Okay. The liberated man. The liberated man has no personal hopes. He doesn't seize on things as his personal position. He receives what the divine will bring him, covets nothing, is jealous of none. What comes to him, he takes without repulsion and without attachment. What goes from him, he allows to depart into the will of things without repining or grief or sense of loss. His heart and self are under perfect control. They are free from reaction and passion. They make no turbulent response to the touches of outward things. His action is indeed a purely physical action. Shariram kevalam karma. For all else comes from above, is not generated on the human plane, is only a reflection of the will, knowledge, joy of the divine Purushottama. Therefore, he doesn't buy a stress on doing and its objects bring about in his mind and heart any of those reactions which we call passion and sin. For sin consists not at all in the outward deed but in an impure reaction of the personal will, mind and heart, which accompanies it or causes it. The impersonal, the spiritual is always pure, apapa vidham, and gives to all that is that its own inalienable purity. This spiritual personality is a third sign of the divine worker. All human souls in this who have attained to a Certain greatness and largeness are conscious of an impersonal force, or law, or will, and knowledge working to them. But they are not free from egoistic reactions, sometimes violent enough of their human personality. But this freedom of the liberated soul has attained, for he has cast his personality into the impersonal, where it is no longer his, but is taken up by the divine person, the Purushottama who uses all finite qualities infinitely 
and freely and is bound by none. He has become a and ceased to be a sum of natural quality and such appearance of personality as remains for the operations of nature is something unbound, large, flexible, universal. It is a free mold for the infinite. It is a living mask of the Purushottama. It's a very uh, interesting para, as all para var in Shirko. And we will read that because we have very little time left. So I will just do one thing. I made a note here of what the divine worker's qualities should be. And we'll take it up next time. The liberated man has no personal rules. Okay. I will pick it up next time. So, I am reading out to you what the qualities of the divine worker should be. I have just taken the whole thing from there and written it down here. Because Shemro does not make a list like that. What he does is he goes on. He tells you absence of egoism is one. And then he discusses it. And then he goes to the next one and discusses it. So he, is, he does not list everything right at the beginning to discuss. It. That's his style. So the divine workers should have Absence of egoism of doer. This is number one. Second, absence of desire. Absence of aim, target. This is number two. Then third, presence of spiritual impersonal action. His action should be impersonal. Not related to any person or any aim or any very limited uh, motive. Fourth, perfect samatha. Equality. Then finally, Trikuna Gita beyond the three modes of nature. And now I tell you the first one is on page 170, the third one is on page 72, 172, and the third one is on page 177. So we are like to miss all the points, and that's why sometimes you have to do this go back to and list all the things that you said. So it is spread over seven pages. All this is. So we are likely to miss the focus. Okay. That's the interesting part. Okay. So we'll take it up next time. This one. The liberated man has no personal goals. Okay. So it was a very interesting discussion. And any of you can uh, get the idea that Archanaji was saying to give examples of a quick success is often a failure actually. <laughs> so, if you can think of some examples, it will be very interesting. Okay, so. Okay. Shall we stop here today? Thank you, Rangata. Thank you. Thank you, Rangata. Thank you. Very interesting discussion today.